Hi, today I'm going to teach you how to solve these uh, identity questions uh, from trigonometry function. The student who sent me this question, she's actually from Priyu, but I think as an SBM or IGCAC student, it's good to explore more hard questions so that you can understand better in your topics. So let's have a look on this question. This question basically asks you to prove sine A plus sine B minus sine A plus B over sine A plus sine B plus sine A plus B will equals to tangent A over 2 and tangent B over 2. This kind of question uh, is a little bit hard, especially he include two, kind, uh, two type of angle A and angle B. And then you need to use uh, some different formula. Uh, over here, I will just write one more formula, which is the additional formula for tangent A, uh, sine A plus B. So we know that sine A plus B will equals to sine A cos B plus um, cos A sine B. Right, so this is the formula for sine A plus B, same idea to minus, you just add a minus for it. And then for tangent half angle, basically you have three different type, even more, as long as you can change it from here. But over here, in this question, we will only use the second and third type of the tangent half angle formula. We are not going to use the first one. All right, so when we want to start this question, we kind of need to choose that uh, we want to do it from left hand side or from, from the right hand side. So normally when I do this kind of question, I will choose a side with more information, which is in this case, I will start from the left hand side. So I will start from here. So I will just write a left hand side. So when I want to do this question, of course I try to think it, uh, what I can do to change this equation into this pattern. So I will keep on thinking when I start doing my step here. But before I want to change the tangent, when I see this, uh, uh, this expression, I want to see like what I can do over here. Because the sine doesn't have a square here, I cannot use the identity formula to actually change it. So over here, the only thing I can change in the equation, in the expression here, is only the sine a plus b for both here. This is the only thing I can change based on uh, the expression I see here. So I, I'm going to change the sine a plus b by using that formula. All right, so this is what happened. So I will say sine a plus sine b minus, so sine a plus b will equals to sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. All right, this is just a formula. We have it. Uh, we have it there. So, and then so I will do the same thing for bottom. This is sine a plus sine b plus sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Okay. After we change the sine a plus b already, then the next thing I will ask myself what I can do to further simplify this equation. So if you see carefully, you will realize in the same, uh, same denominator, uh, same numerator here, you basically you have double sine A, isn't it? Do you see you have sine A and sine A? Basically I can factorize out the sine A. Same idea, you have sine B and sine B here. So that means you can factorize out the sine, sine A and sine B uh, simultaneously. So what I will do is I factorize out the sine A first. So if I factorize out the sine A from here and here, so you can see if I factorize sine A from the first term here, I basically I left one, and I have a minus here, isn't it? This negative is for both here. So minus, if I factorize out the sine A here, I still left a cos B, right? Minus cos B. All right, then I solve this term and this term already. Then I still have a plus. I factorize out the sine B now. So if I take out the sine B, I left one here. If I, this one is minus cos A sine B, right? If I take out the sine B, I still left minus cos A. So I will do the same process for my denominator. So which is factorize out the sine A, then I will have one plus cos B, and then I factorize out my sine B, then I should have one plus cos A. Okay, until now, I think uh, most of the students still able to do until now. And then here you have a very crucial decision you need to make, which is 
what you need to do after this. Because we're not even close to our formula here. Even though we kind of see that 1 minus cos b here, maybe we can use the 1 minus cos x over sin x. So therefore, when I see my half angle here, I say my objective is eventually I want to change uh, my expression into the tangent half angle. So what I will do here is I will always refer back which one I should use. Yeah, you can use either one of it, it doesn't matter. But over here, if I want to use 1 minus cos x over sin x, my objective is like, okay, I have 1 minus cos b, I must make it like divided by sin b, then I can change it into the tangent half angle. So because of that, so I come out a, a decision, maybe for numerator and denominator, I will divide sin A and sin B at the same time. So when I say divide sin A and sin B at the same time, uh, it's the same idea with I multiply 1 over sin A, sin B for my numerator and denominator. Because divide, same idea with multiply 1 over, isn't it? Right, then you can think, now I only like multiply this one for two different terms here. When I multiply from the first term here, sin A and sin B, a, I simplify. I only left 1 minus cos b divided by sin b. Okay, so here I will left 1 minus cos b over sin b. Now I solve the first term already. Then the same idea that like sin b and sin b, if I simplify, I will left 1 minus cos a over sin a plus 1 minus cos a over sin a. Okay, now I do the same thing for my denominator. So if I mul multiply 1 over sin a, sin b for the first term, sin a and sin a I simplify. I will get 1 plus cos b over sin b. And then this one, I will get 1 plus cos a over sin a. Okay, now we finally can change to the tangent half angle, but not yet close to our answer because our answer is not like sin half uh, sin a over 2 plus tangent a uh, b over 2 which is multiply this is multiply this two term but at least from here we know we can actually substitute our tangent half angle into here so that's mean this term I can change into the tangent b over 2 plus tangent a over 2 okay how about the denominator? This is 1 plus cos b over sin b, which is not the same here because this sign must be minus in order to be the half angle here. So therefore, I will check the second or uh, the last tangent half angle formula, which is sin x over 1 plus cos x because it can accept 1 plus cos x here. But the problem is my 1 plus cos x is on the top, my sin x is at the bottom. So what I will do is, I will do some modify for this formula because I want to flip over both, right? So if I want to flip over both, so I will flip over this expression as well because this is over 1, isn't it? So that's mean if I change this uh, tangent half angle into 1 over tangent half angle, I basically, I can get 1 plus cos x over sin x. Right, then it's exactly the same thing, 1 plus cos b over sin b if I change it into the 1 over tangent half angle. So this is what I want to do for my uh, denominator here. So this one will be 1 over tangent b over 2 plus 1 over tangent a over 2. We almost got the answer, but we need to solve this fraction first because uh, this denominator I don't want in this pattern. So what I will do is I want to make them have the same denominator. So what I will do is this one I will I will multiply uh, tangent. I will multiply the tangent b over two for top and bottom. So for this side because same denominator, right? So for this fraction I will multiply tangent a over two for top and bottom. Then, eventually, I will get something like this. So after I multiply already, you can see I will get something like tangent b over 2 plus tangent a over 2 over tangent b over 2 
plus tangent a over 2 over tangent b over 2 multiply tangent a over 2. So I will, eventually I will get a fraction like this and you will realize this one and this one is exactly the same thing. You can simplify and then you left 1. So 1 over 1 over this thing. So I can straight away move the whole thing on the top, isn't it? So therefore, my final answer will be tangent b over 2 multiply tangent a over 2. So this is exactly the same as what the question 1 that I will say proven. Okay, for this kind of questions, uh, it's quite tricky. The first thing I think is uh, very tricky for a lot of students is like uh, what you should mul multiply for this expression because you need to decide what you need to multiply in order to get the final answer. I believe over here, if you want to divide 1 minus cos, one minus cos x, uh, 1 minus cos a for both, you, can, you cannot do that because what? Because this is 1 minus cos a and this one is 1 minus cos b but you can divide both at the same time yes you can do that i believe eventually you will get the same result as well but over here i just um find trying to find some simplest way to solve this kind of question definitely if you know any easiest way uh to solve this kind of question you can let me know at the comment below or else i will see you in the next video bye bye